key ratio is one of the fundamental multiples used to evaluate company strength. There are a few versions of P-E ratio. One of such is the so-called Schiller P-E or CAPE ratio. In this shorter video, I want to briefly describe this version and what it's useful for. Usually, when we talk about P-E ratio, we refer to the trailing 12-month price to earnings per share ratio. This is the standard definition and remains one of the fundamental variables people use to evaluate an individual company's current value. And one can even roughly categorize stocks into value or growth stocks based on this factor. However, the trailing 12-month P-E ratio has its limitations. For example, it can be noisy with seasonality due to business cycle. To overcome some of these limitations, Robert Schiller, the Nobel laureate in economics, and his colleagues invented the so-called cyclically adjusted P-E ratio, or in short, CAPE ratio. Because of his contribution, CAPE is often referred to as a Schiller P-E ratio. It is defined as the ratio of the real price to the 10-year average of real earnings. Here the word real, as in real yield or real rate, means inflation adjusted with the CPI index. And the 10-year average smooths the earnings that uh, otherwise can be noisy due to economic cycle. You can imagine, because of the long-term characteristics, the definition uh, is most useful for a basket or index of stocks rather than single names. To explain such an advantage of long-term cyclical adjustment, let's take a look at the business cycle and its possible impact on the regular short-term P ratio. Since companies usually report high margins and earnings during up cycles, all else being equal, the regular PE will be low during cyclical peaks, sending out buy signals for value strategies. Similarly, during margins and earnings crash at the cyclical bottoms, the regular PE will be artificially high and give out sales signals for value strategies. Probably worse, some cyclical companies report their losses at the trough period, adding another layer of noise. Since Schiller ratio includes periods with both high margins and low margins, the average EPS earnings per share is cyclically adjusted, therefore smoother. Looking at the SP500 P ratio, the regular trading 12 month version, we can see many small spikes. The most significant spikes, most recently, before the COVID 19 pandemic, was the 2000 dot com bubble and 2008 subprime mortgage crisis. The spikes are caused by the earnings crash rather than the price spikes, except for the one before the burst of the 2000 dot com bubble, which is a signal suggesting the stock market living in a dream bubble. Now, if we look at the Schiller P ratio, those two spikes disappear because the denominator is now the cyclically adjusted 10-year average of the real earnings. This becomes clear if we go back and forth between the regular version and the Schiller version. Let's see the trading 12-month version again. And back to the Schiller, Schiller version. Now, the benefit of looking at the Schiller P ratio for baskets and indices. Because Schiller P ratio smooths out the noise of short-term earnings, the real overvalued periods become easier to spot. We can see 1929 and 2000, the two P spikes or bubbles, preceding the crash in, in 1929 and the burst of the dot-com bubble in 2000. From historical distribution, we see when Schiller P ratio is above 25, the stock market is likely living in an extreme bubble. So now, the real question is, right now, as of mid-2021, the current Schiller P ratio being 37, are we living in an extreme bubble? No one can answer that question for sure, I guess, but it's something on almost everyone's mind. Okay, I hope you find this helpful. Thanks for watching and hope to see you next time.